Now I'm not making any excuses, but sometimes it pays off to be a procrastinator. And so lucky for me, we've had a lot of extra time. It is late December and I have yet to plow it all. So I'm lucking out there, but we're gonna finish getting set up for the winter with our 1025R. All right, so we're gonna do a few things today. We gotta go ahead and get our, our gun heated up again. We did some grooving, some tire grooving to get some better traction, but I'm gonna do some tire siping today on the fronts, maybe do a little extra grooving on the backs. We'll see how it goes. And we're gonna tell you, well, rather, we're gonna show you the difference between siping and grooving so you can have a better visual understanding of what the difference is. So while we get that heating up, we're gonna add on some wheel weights to the tractor. We are gonna put on a seat heater, a heated seating pad for the tractor. I've seen some other guys do that, so that'll help keep me a little warmer. And then I wanna show you guys all these products. We're gonna do a little testing in the future, maybe uh, tape it off on the snow pusher and do some different strips and see which one of these products work better. But it's basically to help the, the snow, the ice, from sticking to the pusher itself and uh, even to the snowblower chute. Some of you guys have used a really popular one, Fluid Film, but there were some other recommendations out there. Maybe even have it in your kitchen. So we're gonna try those out in the future, but if you have an opinion on what to use or what to avoid or how it works, let us know. So if you wanna see what our complete winter setup looks like, some of the other things we've tackled, UHMW is involved, make sure you stick around to the end. Hey, really quick, if you do enjoy today's video, you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button down below. And if you're looking for something for your tractor, we sell tractor attachments and we ship them all over the country. So check out goodworkstractors.com. All right, so you gotta heat this thing up for a little while, this heat gun here. And we use this, like I say, to groove our tires previously, but today we're gonna to use it to sipe them. All right, so this is an ideal heated knife and it has these replaceable blades. It comes with, I don't know, eight or 10 of them, something like that. And so depending on how you have it oriented, you can have it face down like this with the groove in the bottom and that's gonna allow you to groove your tires out or basically cut a strip out of the tires or you can flip it over the other way and you're gonna have two individual knives. And if you look close, it's hard to see in the video, but there is an actual um, tapered edge on one side. So you wanna make sure you have it oriented in the right direction as far as this way or that way. Uh, but it, you can sipe with these as well. And so that's gonna put tiny little cuts or tiny little slashes in the tires. And that's a different way to get traction. So we're gonna do that on the front tires today. Oh, here we go. Nice. Hmm. All right. Well, this is a little oversized, I suppose, but it's probably not the end of the world. Let's see here. It's got it's got a controller and your your cigarette lighter over here, your 12 volt convenience, which works out because that's on this side of the tractor. Well, let's see if we can get this thing strapped on here. power to it or not. Do have to turn this on? Or if this outlet even works still. Well, I never pay attention to these convenience outlets, but uh, I've always wondered how they would hold up with the elements. And this is a uh, 2013, I think. So it's eight years, almost nine years old. And you can see there, that's not working. Who knows how long it took for it to get in that condition. Are you guys convenience outlets working on your tractors or do they just always go bad? Something I don't even pay attention to. So I'm gonna take this thing off and put it in my truck, see if it works, um, just to make sure it's not the, the seat heater itself, but it's the tractor, which I think it's the tractor. But part of me is kind of happy because this thing is, man, this does not look good on here. It's driving me nuts. Although it would have kept me warmer in the winter.
Oh yeah. You see that? It's all lit up. So this seems to be working fine. It's the tractor that's the problem, which I think we already knew. All right, well, that's why you don't procrastinate because then you find out something doesn't work when you want it to work <laughs> and then you're behind schedule. So anyway, we're gonna get to putting on these wheel weights now. The, the tire cypress slash groover is almost warmed up. So we're gonna see how quick it can knock this out. I don't think it'll take too long. All right, so first time doing this in, in over a year, but uh, went pretty smooth, forgot some of the lessons learned from the first time around though. But um, first side took us 25 minutes, second side took us eight minutes for two guys. 70 pound cast iron weight. We do sell these weights just so you know. Uh, they're a great add-on item. So if you're buying something else like a set of pallet forks, uh, box blade, uh, snow pusher, rototiller, something that's big, that's gonna ship freight, then we can add on wheel weights and suitcase weights right onto that same skid for no extra shipping cost. These are just too expensive to ship by themselves. It would, it's just cost prohibitive to do so. So think ahead if you can, find something else you want and send them along. You wanna pay attention, you wanna have it, you wanna do a dry fit, you know, put your weight on there, kinda eyeball how far out it's gonna stick. That way you can visualize sort of how long the bolt needs to protrude through the wheel and then have enough length on there to put the couple washers and the nut on and tie it down or secure it down. Uh, some guys asked last time why these don't include carriage bolts because the, the wheels are set up for that. Well, these uh, wheel kits are designed to be universal. So not every wheel is gonna have a carriage bolt set up on there. And so that's why you have the extra nuts on there and washers to lock everything into place. So installation really is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. You just have two bolts that are gonna hold it on. Uh, we made the mistake of using the oblong holes uh, by, by accident the first time around. So we had to take everything off and put it back on. It was trying to suck the, uh, the washers into those oblong holes when we were tightening it down. So hence the reason it took time to take it back off and then put it back on. But the other side went well <laughs> once we realized that it only took eight minutes to do. So if you do it right the first time, you know, you can be done with the tools and everything in a half hour. So wheel weights are great for a few different reasons. Number one, they're out of the way. They're off of your three-point hitch, so you can have some extra weight uh, that's on the backside of the tractor for ballast weight when you're using your front end loader. Now, for our purposes, we're adding this weight to get extra traction, right? That's why we have these grooved slots in our tires too, but we want to be able to have as much power to the ground when we're using our snow pusher and pushing forward. Now, a couple other options that you might see on here for ballast weight. This is a prototype. We call this the hitch hanger. It is patent pending. We're going to have this coming out soon as soon as we uh, work out some of the final details and, and fabric of it all but you're gonna be able to hang three suitcase weights on here right onto a Spico quick hitch and we want it to be compatible with other quick hitches as well and then here we have what's called the Versa bracket so this is gonna give you a lot of bang for your buck it is quick hitch compatible but you can also hook it up right to your three-point hitch quick hitch is not required uh, it's gonna have a built-in weight bar so you can hang eight suitcase weights, whether they're 41 or 70 pounds on here. You'll see it does have a built-in two inch receiver. Uh, this extra little uh, receiver hitch with the, the, the grab hook on there, uh, the pinhole and the ball is gonna be from Heavy Hitch. We'll put a link to that too. You have some chain grab hooks that are welded on here as well, and then a chainsaw holder up top. If you follow the channel for a period of time, you know that we take ballast weight very seriously, and so that's why we came out with these couple of options here to offer to you guys. And again, we can ship these right to you. Just check it out on our website. All right, well, I can smell that heat gun a little bit, so it's ready to go. Let's get to siping. All right, well, <clears throat> we're gonna see how this goes. Grooving was kind of a pain. It took a lot of effort to push through. Um, siping should be easier. I don't know, I'm just, it's gonna take a few of these cuts here to get in a groove. Let's see what I did there? All right, okay, here we go. I don't know. Let's see if this is any easier. Boy, that is, oh, it already bent one. Well, that's not cool. Wow. No bueno. All right, well, that's disappointing. On the first try, it bent this blade, and I think that, I don't think there's enough support. I think when you have the uh, the radius, the turn down here, it has enough support to cut through, but these individual legs just aren't strong enough on their own. So, I don't know. I don't know how folks did that online, but I don't even want to give it a second shot. I mean, it bent the very first sight that we were trying to do. So. I don't know if I would call this a siper. I think I'm gonna stick with calling this a groover. And to be fair, they do call it, or the manufacturer calls it a groover, but it just seemed like everywhere I read online, there were folks saying that they use this as a siper as well. Uh, I'm giving up on that though. I think I'm gonna to try to turn this around or put another blade on and maybe do some shallow grooves. That was a challenge with the, with the grooving is it, it wore you out. It was not fun to do, although the end results I think are very promising, but 
I'm gonna try to do very shallow grooves with this instead that maybe don't cause as much um, or don't wear me out as quick and you could potentially repeat that just do a couple passes if you wanted to to get it deeper or just stick with your shallow groove and see how it does for you all right so we've got this turned around i'm going to try to do a shallow groove instead um, if this does not go quickly and easily i'm going to give up i don't feel like <laughs> exerting myself more than i need to right now but we're going to try to do just one groove right in the middle see how that goes so again that whole tip there is is hot so you're just trying to kind of heat it up and preheat the, the rubber before you get to the actual knives. So that's a nice shallow lazy man's groove right there, which personally I'm okay with. Slippery though, slippery little guys. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna skip over the 18 by 8.5 part. One tire done didn't keep that close of attention i think it took maybe a half hour to do this tire not doing as shallow or as deep of cuts we're doing shallower cuts and it's actually a little bit harder to control because it almost wants to slip out the deeper cuts kind of help keep it in place and in line so <laughs> the first few cuts are not great but by the end we were kind of back to normal there for the most part there's a thought online that you want to have these cuts extend all the way through the end kind of like what i did here on a couple of these treads and that wasn't intentional um, where you want to have water or ice or snow be able to kind of leak out and, and come out of the groove on the end there's another train of thought that says that you want these grooves to pack full of snow or ice or whatever it is and that the the friction uh, of the snow versus snow or ice versus ice or snow versus ice whatever it is is going to provide that extra grip so there's two schools of thought there on what to do if you look up pictures online you're going to see most folks are not cutting through the end <sighs> you know i'd say you can always cut through the ends later on if you want to that'd be really easy just to nip that through uh, later on but it's going to be a little bit harder to put the rubber back on so this is the route that we're going to begin with and you'll notice they actually stamped or integrated it's built right in the size of the tire that's on here so that's why i didn't carve out in a few of these locations every fourth tread or so they they stamped on the 18 by 8.5 by 10 right into the tire and that was a little challenging to try to cut through so i gave up on that right away and just did a little slot right next to it all right, well that second side went by in a flash. 10 minutes flat, we got it done. I just kind of concentrated and, and just I just did it, okay? So now we're gonna get the pusher on, the snowblower on the backside too, hook it up, get it ready to go. I see it just started to snow right outside too. We're getting ready in the nick of time, folks.
if you guys might remember, we've got an electric chute rotation. It's got a little quick disconnect here, so we'll plug it in up here. I've got it already hooked up to the battery, and it's got its own controller, so you can electrically actuate and, and get that chute to rotate left to right instead of having to have a crank handle and, and turn around and you know drive yourself nuts. So this is pretty nice. I suppose it's good to have too much cabling. It does require you to figure out what to do with it though. Yeah, so I always want to test this out, make sure it's going to work like it's supposed to. That's a thing of beauty. Love it. That's awesome. All right, guys, so this is my snow removal setup for the winter time, and first impression is it's, it's pretty long. I would guess this is probably... Well, the, the pusher's about the same length as a bucket to the bottom edge, maybe a hair longer. Uh, the blower does hang out a bit on the back. I, I guess this is probably 17 feet long, maybe 16. We could put a tape on it, but somewhere in that range. So it takes up a bit of space. It's going to take up a full garage stall um, lengthwise for most of you guys. But let's start at the back and take a look at what we have going on here. And so this is going to be an MK Martin pull type snow blower. You can see the augers on the inside. So you can drive forward, go over the snow. Uh, we've tested these out with some bigger tractors, but this year you're going to try it out on a subcompact and see how it does. It's 54 inches wide, so just a hair wider than the tractor itself. You can get it equipped with a manual rotation if you want to, uh, electric rotation if you don't have the extra hydraulics, or you can get the hydraulic rotation, but that means you need to have some rear hydraulics on your tractor to be able to uh, hook it up and plug it into. We've done some pretty in-depth videos on all the options and features that are available, but this thing's made up in Canada. Uh, they know what they're doing. Somewhere around here it says that it's got a two-year limited warranty on the entire unit, and then it's got a five-year gearbox warranty as well, so they're gonna stand behind their equipment. You know, HLA and MK Martin are sister companies. HLA is a snow pusher, MK is a snow blower, so these guys make high quality stuff, not just for snow, but for landscaping as well. You can see it is quick hitch compatible as well. You can hook it up directly to your category one three-point hitch. Uh, one of the big things that sets MK apart from some of the others is the fact that they're gonna have bolt-on and adjustable skid runners, and then they're also gonna have a bolt-on cutting edge as well. There's a lot of snow blowers out there, believe it or not, that don't have either one of these, which I find semi-remarkable but uh, the fact that these are, are replaceable they're reversible for the cutting edges so you can wear both sides if you want to you can get tie var edges or the the plastic or the poly uh, to upgrade and protect your driveway and speaking of that i'm going to show you those edges of what i'm talking about on the snow pusher right now all right so this is the hla 54 inch snow pusher part of the 1500 series this is the size i recommend for the subcompacts some guys do want to go 60 inch uh, mark i'm talking to you over there in battle creek i know you got the 60 inch on yours but uh, 54 is the most common size you'll see just a, a hair wider this matches up the same width as the snowblower on the back end this is a good look we haven't had a lot of these here at, at our shop but it's very popular you have the uhmw on the back drag the uhmw on the main cutting edge and then you have the uhmw skid runners as well so uhmw is let me let me make sure i don't mess this up ultra high molecular weight material plastic it's got a lot of really good properties it's going to wear very well it's going to scrape pack snow very well it's quiet um, so i kind of sum it up to say that it cuts like steel but protects like rubber and it's not going to mark off or you know chip up or damage areas of your driveway like steel would you know if you have concrete or asphalt so it's a good option to have the downside with rubber and and i don't mean it's all bad it's got a lot of good properties as well it's going to be protective it's going to be quiet um, it's not going to be very durable though and it's not going to cut through packed snow at all so those are the trade-offs and while the uhmw is going to be an upcharge it's going to be the best of both worlds if you do have that concrete or paved surface so the skid runners they're going to come pre-drilled with these uh routed grooves in them and you know kind of shaped and formed and everything else the edges you know since we sell so many for so many different size and they're not standardized um, they're not going to have anything drilled out in there so these drill out with a multi-purpose bit um, i think we put on half inch hardware if i recall correctly on here but um you're just going to use the existing holes that are in your pusher, whether it's on the back drag or the main pusher edge. Just use those as a template, mark them on the UHMW, drill it out, add your hardware. It's an easy process to do. If we can do it, so can you. So every year we try something a little bit different just to kind of test it out, play around with it, see how it works. And so this is the first year using a pull type snowblower um, on a 1025R period, but we've used a pusher many times as well. I just really 
enjoy it and appreciate it. So it's finally snowing right now and I may just go out and plow just to say I, <laughs> I got it done. This could be the first plow uh, of the winter of the 2021, 2022 winter. So, but I say all that because a snow pusher is gonna be one of the more economical and versatile pieces of snow removal equipment. And you don't have to invest all the money into a snow blower. If you're not sure how much snow you're gonna be getting or you know if the trend is showing we're just not getting many snowfalls at all or it's just a couple inches, the snow pusher is a good alternative to be able to still manage and take care of that snow when you need to. Alrighty, that's gonna wrap it up for us today. Again, if you are interested in some of the products that you saw in this video, you gotta check out our website, goodworkstractors.com. Whether it's the snow pusher, the snow blower, even the tire groover, we have a link to that and where you can buy it on Amazon. All sorts of good stuff for tractor owners. And don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, check out the other videos. We have over 400 other videos for you to take a look at. We're coming out with new videos every week. Hit that subscribe button down below. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.